Stories and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Looks to you, you're not my real dad, or old enough. <laughs> I never claimed to be your dad. What sorcery is this? Oh, I don't know. I could see us standing on some extended bridgeway. Silver, I am your father's uncle's cousin's son's second roommate. <laughs> this has no relation at all. But it makes for a funny joke. <laughs> Also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Songs. Are we going to talk about sports this episode? If not, I'm going to deck out. Sports? I guess. We can talk about sports if you want to. Oh, wait, the no. The easy tournament. I don't want to talk about sports. What am I saying? I'm going crazy! <laughs> also joining us today is Tatera. I am all about the sports. I am so ready to play some buckball. I already have a team assembled, too. You got me who kicks the ball. You got Silver, who's the flyer. And you got Safi, who handles the basket. I thought Safi was a flyer. No, I'm not. She's a unicorn. (laughs) Updates. God dang it. Let me see. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was all art. (laughs) So, anywho. In today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 6. Common grounds. In this episode, Quibble Pants asks Rainbow Dash for help to bond with the daughter of his new special sum pony because, like Dash, she's a real sports pony. Alrighty then. So, we're talking about sports today. So, you got any idea how to play buckball? Well, the rules are pretty straightforward, it seems. I don't know about strategy and all the nuances that a professional would make. <laughs> oh, wait, it's just Snail. <laughs> he, he just does stuff. Yeah, and, and somehow he manages just to win. If you talk, if you really think about it, right? If it's just putting one ball into another goal or net, wouldn't that be? Oh, sorry, wouldn't that encompass all sports? Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's curling. That's more where you polish the floor. Yeah, I, I think that's the trick to make people polish the floor. You know what I mean? Because it's on ice, Norbert. The, the the scam isn't working. Well, that's curling. What about shuffleboard? Well, that's just a celebration that you've gotten old. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you must be a professional at it, then. I'm getting old. Hey, I'm the champ. I haven't been invited to a shuffleboard tournament, and when I do, I'll just say, Oh, you bastards. <laughs> but, yeah, do, do tell me. Does anyone out there know of a shuffleboard champion who's not in their 60s? I don't know. I, I'm sure there is, because if shuffleboarding is in the Olympics, there has to be. Is it in the Olympics? I think so. Never heard of shuffleboarding being in the Olympics. Because if that's the case, then I, I worry about the ratings. Clearly, everyone's asleep for it. <laughs> if they aren't by the start, they will be by the end. Uh, let's see. Shuffleboard could be on its way to an Olympic sports. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'm not going to go into it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, my goodness. It could be. But anywho, yeah. Um... Before we get into it, uh, first impressions are in order. Silva, what do you think, man? Well, I enjoyed this episode. It's not my my favorite of the series, but it's fun. And when you know some of the uh, some of the logistics behind it, it's actually quite uh, heartwarming. It's it's quite fun, and so I found it uh, very enjoyable. Quibble Pants. It's fun to see him again, and to see this buckball thing evolve even further. By the way, when Buck Paul was in, first introduced, right, uh, were there any comprehensive rules or like, I mean, like, were there anything to this level? Because I remember, right, it was just some guys just want to have fun. Well, I believe it was Applejack and Rainbow Dash started it up. Really? It was just a rivalry with Brayburn. Well, huh. actually, even Rainbow Dash hadn't even heard of it up until, uh, you know, she started playing it. Huh. So I'm sure it started as an all-Earth Pony sport, but they quickly evolved. And now I... Well, okay, well, I'm getting into the actual events of the show, but I, Apple Luce's role is quite hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True that, true that, true that. And at the same time, too, right, um, in future episodes, Buckball is going to play a bigger part. Like, wow, this this game that's only prominent in, what, season... F- six, was it? Seven? No, season two. Yeah, season seven. Yeah, season seven somehow makes it way to season nine, and there's going to be two of them. Like, what? Or was it season eight? I forget. Either way, it's it's a recurring idea, so good on them. Yeah, true that, true that. Season six, by the way. Well, there we go. 
Wait, season six? Is that? Oh my gosh. Wow. But anywho, uh, Silver, carry on. Well, not much more to say before we get into the nuts and bolts. I don't yet want to get into uh, the hidden story behind this this episode, which is not all that hidden, really. But Alrighty then. And also, Sapphire, what do you think? I'm going to be honest, there's not really much in the first impressions department that I uh, have much to say. Although, I know kids will be kids. Like, they're not as prominent in the acting world. I, I didn't enjoy the kids' voice acting. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's understandable. It's understandable. All right, all right. That's like all I really have to say. It's like I didn't enjoy the kids' voice acting. It was kind of hard to, you know. Swallow. Uh, not really swallow, but y- you know what I mean. All right. Then. And Tara, what do you think? I really enjoyed this episode, and after I did a little bit of research after watching the episode, it just made me kind of like it even more. And pretty much what Safi said, it was kind of, for me, it was kind of hard to understand what the child was saying at times. <laughs> all right, you then, all right, you then. So, and as for me, I like this episode a lot. I mean, it really highlights family in this one. And it, and I feel like, how do I put this, um, Quibble Pants here really shines in this episode. The first time when he first appeared, he was more of an annoying git. But now here, <laughs> he's more of a person who is willing to do anything for the love of his life. So, anywho, if you haven't watched this episode yet, pause here and go check it out. Welcome back. So, we start off the episode with a montage. or Well, not really a montage, but... More of a backstory kind of deal where the announcer or the presenter... Announcer, right? Presenter, I don't know. Narrator. Narrator, thank you. Um, the narrator tells about the history of Buck Ball and how popular it's getting and the best team in Equestria is Team Ponyville. And somehow Appaloosa kind of st- stood out and made a dedicated stadium and museum for these sports and this is kind of cool yeah um, and somehow the Ponyville team are in the theaters and everybody's uh, staring at them like they recorded the film or something like that Ooh. which is exactly what Fluttershy would want everyone's staring at her <laughs> Oh no. I'm pretty sure that's what Silver will get when he goes to BronyCon. Everyone will just stare at him. <laughs> uh, all they're doing is staring at me. I'll feel like I've done something very wrong. All you need is some scre- creepy music. Cretus! Dominus! Oh boy. But uh, I have to um, backstory for a bit. Uh, we're recording this before BronyCon. So jokes related to BronyCon are going to be a bit dated when this episode comes out. So. The most obvious question was, how was BronyCon, guys? <laughs> it was great. I made money, I guess. Even <laughs> though you, I haven't made money yet. Did you give it to Silver for the cursed jaw? Cursed jaw? Yeah, you know. <laughs> the jaw of money whenever she, you know, says a naughty word. Ah, yes. Or was she oofs? Oh, yeah. Which I try not to do anymore because it just makes my payout bill even worse. <laughs> Wow. I like the part where I made puns so bad that the entire audience just rushed the stage and destroyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> and then I drove lightning bliss so crazy that, that blood started pouring from her eyes. And that she used it as a hose against me. Yes, the blood geyser. Ah! That sounds oh, so morbid. Hi, Silver Quill. Nice to meet you. I just love the part where Vini was there and he was just eating popcorn looking at you guys fight. And then there was the part where Lauren Faust said, you know, your character is so fun, I'd like to make a whole series based on him. <laughs> if only. <laughs> we all can wish. Uh, <laughs> things didn't happen. But anywho, continuing on with our uh, review. Uh, our <laughs> uh, all those things never happened or didn't happen. <laughs> Good question, never know. Norman. I am going to try and drive Lightning Bliss a little bonkers. Oh, that, 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 blood that's going to but... happen, for sure. <laughs> But let me dream a little longer. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's continue with reviews. <clears throat> um, once the um, show is over, our heroes goes out 
and before they can take a step further, they are stopped by fans. Um, a little kid, Philly, who is a big fan of Team Ponyville, and wants their autograph. Snails notice this, and being the opportunist that he is, well, kind of makes this opportunity into a money bag, where he, as people or ponies who are interested in paying them to sign or paying them to get Snail's autograph. And a lot of people do, and well, that's how Snail's got rich. I didn't think Snail's was that smart. <laughs> well, he could see an opportunity, but I could see this becoming a very corrupting road for him. Oh, yeah. He's basically mooching off his friend's success, and his friend deserves... Well, you know, don't don't view your friend as just a money bag. Wait, isn't that the job of a manager? Theoretically, a manager is supposed to be helpful, but let's be honest. A lot of managers, I think, do start to view their clients as uh, cash cows. Oh, yeah. The, the goose laying the golden eggs. Yep. Isn't that so how on. it is at some Comic-Cons, though? You pay to get someone's autograph? Oh, yeah, that's true. That is true. I, I experienced this firsthand at uh, BuckCon 2013. The way they did it was a bit different. Um, instead of handing out real money, you have to hand out tokens or something like that. And one oh. token is equivalent to ten pounds. And to get an autograph, it's one token. So yeah, you you can get the scheme there. Yeah. Well, in fairness, I I remember from Nightmare Nights, I got to meet uh, Brenda Crislow's agent. He seemed like a very nice person, and you know, there's not, none of the the sleazy manager stereotype. I'll, at, at the same time, I'm remembering back when I worked for a TV station, we were recording uh, a show with the wife of a very rich uh, dealership owner, and she brought an agent, and his entire role was basically to just frown at us and make it look like we weren't doing enough for her. All he did. Wow, that's his job? That was his job. That was him trying to be relevant and, you know, get the paycheck, I guess. <laughs> Okay. The, the entire staff took an instant dislike to him. <laughs> instant. Uh, but but in all honesty, uh, with the money for autograph thing, it's uh, how how do I want to put this without making the voice actress or celebrities look bad or sound bad? Well, it's part of the con organization. If everyone just had sort of an open day on asking for autographs, uh, you the, no one would be able to get anywhere. They'd be blocked off all the time. You have to have an organized, structured time. You also have to make it worth their while. This is this is their living. True, true. I mean, here's the thing. Um, I I am friends with a con organizer. Um, if you guys who hear the show knows who I'm talking about, but what he told me is that the way that the con organized things is like this: um, people who ask for autographs, uh, they have to pay, and the con and the artist gets a cut. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how the percentage is, but they will get a cut. That's how, or that's why, cons want to ask people to pay for autographs and whatnot. So maybe they get a 40-60 cut, 30-70 or something like that. Uh, 30 going to the con while 70 goes to the artist and something like that. That's how it goes. That's how it works sometimes. And that's how con stay up afloat. Because organizing a con... Especially like BronyCon, it's not going to be cheap. I like that BronyCon where they grabbed me by the ankles and shook me until my wallet <laughs> fell out. <laughs> but wait, who uses a wallet nowadays? I thought it's one of those uh, Fandango small type of plastic thing. And who brings cash? Oh, Norman, how many conventions have you been to? I don't know. But by the way, um, I'm just saying what I know about American nowadays because... Americans, from what I heard, they don't carry cash with them. Oh, it's a different rules at a convention. I've had people pay for things with $50 bills. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. I've and had people like, pay me with $100 bills. <laughs> and they just wonder, why, 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 do you have, why do you have a bill so large? Why do I have to split it? Oh, by the way, would you like to buy $100 worth of merchandise? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Please? I, I just want to get this. Like, for your daily lives, most of you guys... Do you carry um, cash? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, no. I carry cards. Cards. <laughs> All right. So no cash then. Cash cards. Oh, cash and cards. Very rarely. Very rarely. I I got some dessert on Friday with change that I found 
in my sofa. Oh, yes. okay, that's cool. Seppi, what about you? I don't keep a lot of cash unless I'm going to like an event, like a fair, or you know, like a convention, as you said, because not every booth is going to take card like they do nowadays. I do carry cash, just not very much, like on my person. Mm, all righty then. And Tara, what about you? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I don't carry a lot of cash unless it's for like an event or some sort. And I carry all kinds of cards, even my Pokemon cards. <laughs> All right. And so I think this is a cultural thing because it's the opposite for me. Okay, I do have plastic, but I don't want to use it that much because of the, uh, what you call this credit card um, debit or something like that. But over here, in mostly in Malaysia, we, we, we tend to use a lot of cash, paper. So I think this is something cultural then. All right. Then. Anywho, um, carrying on. Uh, so Snails is dragged by Snips to get autographs or to give autographs to their fans. Um, Rainbow Dash just laments that she couldn't join them because she has to, well, uh, go to the museum to see the history of Buckball for Applejack because Applejack is busy. And in my head right now, I'm thinking, why is Rainbow Dash doing this for her? Like, did she lose a bet or something? Are they in cahoots? Ship it. <laughs> well, the thing that I'm curious is that, yeah, she's going to go look at all these stuff for Applejack, but it's not like she's taking a picture or anything, so it's like, what, are you just going to tell her what you saw? I mean, where's the camera? <laughs> yeah, th- th- that's one thing, but the, the real question is, like, why? No flash photography. Oh, yeah, that's also true. So, um, okay, uh, let- let's move on, because we will never get an answer for this. I say that they're sharing... A roll of hay. Yep. So anywho, uh, as they walk on, they, they just say that how the other teams are doing because the other team are looking fierce. Like, uh, Team Ponyville might get some competition here. And Rainbow Dash says, okay, you guys have fun. Good luck. I'm going to be first in line to the museum so I can just get in and out. And Pinkie Pie says, oh, maybe you got some competition because somebody's camping out. And... To this, Rainbow Dash is shocked. Which sport fan would do this? Like, who? And, well, it seems that the sport fan is Quibble Pants! Yay! Patton also is back. Woohoo! Whoa. And the, the shocker for me is that his mane and coat are the exact same color as before. That is... I thought he might have done a dye job for Daring Do. Oh, yeah. Maybe it didn't wash out yet. <laughs> or maybe that's just his natural look, in which case I... I... He was born to be a Daring Do fan. It's his destiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got the same skin color as Daring Do almost. True, true. Uh, but it's kind of interesting. Like, I can understand why they didn't really recolor him. Because the color arrangement, everything would work so well for him. So if they did do anything with the mane and tail, it will kind of ruin the aesthetic. But anywho... We, we just get to see Rainbow Dash talking to Quibble, like, what you're here, what, why? I, I didn't know your sports pony and stuff. And clearly something is a bit iffy, because Quibble Pants here are just using terms, lingos like, uh, kicking the puck into the net, and throwing the ball at the referee. Things like that. Silly things that don't make sense, but are related to sports. I don't know. Sometimes when a ref is really bad, I can see pe- why people would throw things at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the point. But we see the reason why. Because we are introduced to clear skies and wind sprint. Sprint, right? S-P-R-I-N-T? Sprint? Yes. All right. So anywho, we are introduced to them. And it seems that clear sky is Quibblepan's special sum pony. And ooh. Um, this is an interesting development. Quibble Pants can get a date. What? Yes, nerds can date. Have we blown your minds? Indeed. I, I am surprised. Like, what? All minds have been blown. How does he do it? I want to know his secret. I have secret. no idea. Wait, his mind's blown. Silver, quick. What's one plus one? Eleven. <laughs> Oh no, we lost him! No, it makes sense. You put a one, you put another one, it's eleven. 
You have to take out the plus, though. Oh, yeah, true. Norman, stop going 1984 on us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, Quibble Pants introduced Rainbow Dash to his special sun pony, which is Clear Skies, and the little squirt, which is Wind, uh, wind Sprint, is uh, Clear Skies' daughter. Uh, it's not stated in the beginning, but it seems that something happened to Clear Sky's husband's slash Windsprint's dad, and it seems that Windsprint's dad was a sports pony. So it will be very interesting to see what happened here. So anywho, um, Quibble Pants waited in line because he wanted to bring Clear Skies and Windsprint to the museum to take a look around and see Buckball and stuff. And clearly, you can see that Wendy here is not interested in the museum at all. She'd rather be seeing the game. And her mom just says, oh, you know, Quibble Pants uh, waited in line for us. We, we shouldn't um, waste this opportunity. Let's just go in. Let's go inside and just look. Is now a good time to talk about who's voicing these characters? Oh, yes. That's that's a good um, segue. Yes. So, who are voicing this character? Because the child sounds like a child. Because she is. Wind Sprint is voiced by Patton Oswalt's daughter, Alice Oswalt. Ah. And Clear Sky is uh, based on... Uh, well, is voiced by Alice's stepmother slash Patton's uh, wife, Meredith Salinger. Ah. Actually... I gotta double check that. Are they married or are they just very serious dating? I think they're married. From what I, I remember way back when, when doing research or just doing the news on this one, and I just saw partner. I'm not hundred percent sure because I think they could be married, but like Silver say, they could be seriously dating. Nope. I uh, double checked, and they were married in 2017. Ah, so all right. And so, in sort of a funny role reversal. Meredith, the stepmother, is now playing Clear Sky, the biological mother, <laughs> to Windsprint, who is voiced by Alice, who is the biological child, of Patton Oswalt, who is the biological child of somebody, but I'm not going to check that far back. Okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That just sounds confusing. I try. <laughs> but anywho, um, this is kind of interesting. The, the backstory for this one is that the writers for the show wanted to involve Patton's family in an, in an episode. So they tried and work it out, but it couldn't for season seven, six, um, seven or eight, something like that. But this was the perfect opportunity for it. And the whole setup for this episode was from a joke that Patton Oswald did, which was the nerdy father kind of relating to his jock son. But instead of the son, it's a daughter. And instead of biological, it's uh, adoptive. So... That's the whole setup there. Go read the, what you call this, the interview that um, the writer for the producer of My Little Pony, who was it? Josh, not Josh Haber, but, oh man, I, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting names. Oh, no problem there. But anywho, um, it's kind of really interesting. So that's why the child, Alice, or Windy here, doesn't sound good. She's not professional. It's still kind of cute that they incorporate her then. Yeah. And it is. at the time when she recorded this, Windy was, or Alicia was, a big fan of My Little Pony. And I think that's why the crew wanted to uh, get her on board, you know, like make her feel fun and awesome. But the problem with animation is it takes a long time to get things done. So by the time that uh, it was done, I heard that Alice is not a huge fan of ponies anymore. Oh my goodness. Wow. She's a fan, but uh, not a huge ne fan. Nepotism ruining interest in a show since just now. <laughs> That's an Academy record. <laughs> but anywho, let's carry on. Let's carry on. <clears throat> uh, Rainbow Dash talks to Alice, and she seems that she's not interested in the museum at all. Like Rainbow Dash. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, Quibble pulls Rainbow Dash aside and asks for help. And I'm just going to speed forward here a bit because... It's going to be the same MO where Quibble Pants doesn't feel like he can relate to Windy because he's not a sports pony like his or like her dad. So uh, Rainbow Dasher will do everything to help Quibble with getting along with Windy. One of the few things uh, Quibble does is buy a book for Windy 
And Windy doesn't like books because books are for eggheads and stuff. And Rainbow says, I have found my spirit sister. <laughs> yeah. And, and before that, before I continue on, Rainbow Dash here just says like, oh, I, I know Team Ponyville. Who do you think trained them? And Windy's response is, wait, you are Rainbow Dash? A Wonder Ball? Like, how many Rainbow Ponies do you know? <laughs> well, I mean, her stepfather is technically a grayscale Rainbow Pony. Really? He's got the spectrum. Oh, wait, he's from G1. Behold, the Rainbow of Darkness. Darkness, Charlie, my friend. <laughs> oh, man, but still... I'm, okay, here, here's one of the problems of My Little Pony. Ponies not knowing who the bearers of element are. Like, they are celebrities now. Yeah, they saved the world, like, how many times now? Countless. But the last time Rainbow Dash let the let celebrity stats get to her head, she, like, almost let a cart full of ponies go off a cliff. Yeah, but still, at least ponies get to know who's, who they are. I mean... Norman, don't encourage her. You'll kill us all. <laughs> Don't mind. Oh, okay. Anywho, anywho. Um, like I mentioned before, kind of want to speed forward or fast forward a few things. So Rainbow Dash pulls Quibble Pants aside and trains him in the art of athleticism and fails. So horribly. Yep. <laughs> yep. So uh, the other thing is bribery by putting them on stage against Ponyville. What? I do just want to point out, I found it hilarious how Quibble admitted, I can't even lift two books. And I like books. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, dang, dude, even I can carry two books. Okay, okay, okay. I, I just have to ask everyone here. I mean, how pathetic is Quibble here? I mean, he doesn't know how to kick a ball badly. I mean, I can kick a ball badly. I can run. And wheeze because of my asthma attack. And I can lift more than two books. So, what's wrong with Quibble here? Well, I mean, Quibble did say he has uh, 17 charisma on ogres and ugriettes, but he probably needs more strength. <laughs> I think he turned all that charisma towards winning over Clear Sky. Yeah, true. He's used up all his critical roles. All that's left is a fan. <laughs> I'm talking nerd talk now. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, yeah. No, but honestly, okay, I, I just want to ask a general question. Are you guys good at quote-unquote sports? Yes. Uh... Passable. Let's just say passable. I guess. All right. Silver? Well, okay, I admit on the racetrack I was plenty passable. All right. Everybody passed me. <laughs> good one. Thank you. Thank you. I have made you all laugh by admitting my own my own failings. But at least you can run. <laughs> That's the thing. But I'm not sure. Like Quib, I I I know the joke here is that he's bad, but no one is this bad. Oh, I don't know. I've uh, Mr. Burns. He's rich. Yes, but have you seen him try to bowl? I have, and it's just no bueno. No bueno at all. But there's actually one other thing that he's really failing at. And it's fascinating oh. uh, to, to learn about. Online, there are any number of uh, tips and guides for step parents. Mm. Stuff to help them get ready, you know, coaching for trying to get to know these new this new member, your new member of their family, their new member of yours, and it tries to help you navigate. I just like to read some of the uh, headlines, the steps. All right. One, don't come on too strong. What is he doing? He is trying to smother this this girl with familial bonding. Do get on the same parenting page with your new spouse and his or her ex. So, talking about methods, rewards, punishment, chores, allowances, all that. He hasn't done that. He, he's focusing so much on just impressing that he hasn't yet talked about, you know, what do you, how do you discipline her? How do you encourage her? All, right. all that. Granted that quibble here is getting to know clear skies and they are clearly in love. They, they they clearly are going in the direction. But for me, I feel that Quibble may not be in line to tell, oh, um, if you do good, you'll get this. If you do bad, I'll punish you or something. I mean, it's not there yet? Maybe. Yeah, it definitely doesn't seem like they're at that point yet, I mean. Well, we're, but we're at another step. Don't set your expectations too high, okay? I think we can say he's definitely violating this no, rule. No, true that. 
Don't overstep your bounds. Depends on how you look at it. Do plan activities with your stepchild. Okay. He's planning things with her, but he's not planning with her. Oh, yeah, true. He's not asking what she wants to do. He's kind of assigning things. And perhaps the hardest one of all, don't take it personally. That one that one can be hard because we can clearly tell that Quibble here is really taking it really personally. Well, he's, he's basing the success and failure of his whole relationship on this, and that's that's rough. Yeah, but he has a good reason for this, because he says that he's really into clear skies, and she's into him too. So they are compatible, but if the child doesn't like him at all, it's going to have a strain on the relationship. So he has to win Windy here. To make the whole family happy. There's reasons for why Windy is not taking to Quibble here. But we'll hold it for later. But Silva, you want to add anything to that? I mean, clearly, try getting them on stage to play against uh, Ponyville. Uh, that's definitely overstepping bound. You're trying to buy her affection, basically. And kids... I mean, one of the th- one of the things that my when My Little Pony does really well, is that it understands that kids are sharper than we sometimes give them credit. Yep, yep true. Mm-hmm. That. And and this is a great example. Wendy, she sees right through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even Quibble doesn't uh, believe it. Like, what? We're playing Ponyville. <laughs> Anything. We could have yeah. been a better team facing against Ponyville, and that's Team MBS. Oh God, I'm not hundred percent sure how we do, uh, but. Anywho, um, we clear, clear skies here just says you don't really need to do all this to impress Windy and stuff. But yeah, we will see the chaos happen because it's time for an exhibition match between Team Ponyville and Team Fan. Woohoo! I'm just gonna summarize it like this: Team Fan sucks. Windy's Windy's talented. Windy's talented. She she has a future in sports. But Quill, let's just say that every role he took was a negative one. Is that even possible in D and D? I ask you, is it? I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure Josh and the Brony D and D group could probably figure it out. <laughs> yes, yes. It's where you fall so hard you actually give life back to your opponent. <laughs> oh my god! So basically, in Final Fantasy, you get hit with a confused ray you get confused and you accidentally use a phoenix down on the opponent yeah that that seems that'd be something <laughs> yeah or pokemon it punched itself in its confusion <laughs> how do you do that good question technically you can do that yeah why are you hitting yourself yeah i know uh, but anywho uh windy is we windy had enough of this windy had enough and she's pissed and Claire just tells Quibble to maybe we should think maybe we should think about this. And Quibble is defeated. He is deflated and defeated. Rainbow Dash looks for Quibble and asks what's wrong and stuff. And long story short, Rainbow Dash just tears Quibble pants down saying that you're a terrible sports pony, you've got no idea what you're doing and stuff. And Quibble here is visibly angry at Rainbow Dash saying that I know this. Why are you telling me this? Are you trying to cheer me up or turn me down? And Rainbow Dash just says, you should just be yourself. You shouldn't be asking me for help. I'm a sports pony. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I wish and she admits it's it. true. Yeah, that's character growth. Rainbow Dash admitting she's bad at something. She's bad at advice for the heart. Oh my god. Could you just imagine if she really tries to hook... Oh my goodness, no. If she tries to hook, hook ponies yep. up. Basically, she... She just holds Fluttershy up in front of Discord. Look, just date her already. Come on. <laughs> oh my! I cannot just wait for that. Be one. done with it. I cannot wait for one that one episode, man. You know the one I'm talking about. Oh, I know. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, angels have an insight there. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, <clears throat> in the next scene, we we see Windy and Sky having a little tat a tat, and the reason why Windy is not giving quibble past the time and day is that she doesn't want to forget her dad if she feels like quibble pants here is trying to make her forget about her father and take his place and sky just says oh no he's not doing that he's trying to get along with you 
trying too hard, but still trying. And yeah, she just says like, you should really give him a chance. I mean, he's really trying here and stuff. And, and now I suddenly realize her father would likely perished in a freak shuffleboard accident. Oh man, it's curling. How would the father be an accident if he was a Pegasus? He tried to shuffle too hard, <laughs> and he ripped a wing, and he fell over the side of the ship because that's where shuffleboard takes place. And he got eaten by a trihorn bunyip who thought he was a cucumber. That's dark, Silver. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Torterra. Meet Silver Quill. And his final words were, "Don't remarry." <laughs> but he, wow. but he, she couldn't hear it because he was gurgling salt water. <laughs> It came out more as <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, be a show, folks. Oh boy. So what's the And the trihorn bunyip was all like <laughs> Hey, oh, wow. that wasn't a cucumber. <laughs> the service here stinks. Oh, and anywho Quibble Pants comes along, apologizes to Windy and asks that if they could start over anew and with that, they kind of do, and they try to get along. They all go see the game between Ponyville and I got no idea which losing team is going to play. <laughs> Let's just call them Team Sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, Team Sacrifice. So uh, we can see Windy trying to teach Quibble Pants about the game and stuff. And yay, that's awesomeness. And Quibble just points out what Pinky is doing with a somersault triple bounce into a goal. And Windy just says, what sorcery is this? How do you know? You're not a sports pony. And Quibble Pants just says, oh, it's in the book here. This strategy that everybody knows. What? It's the power of his books compels him. No, yeah, true. But come on, just like giving away strategies for the team. Like Team Ponyville is playing with a handicap. If a guy in the stands can see the strategy, one would hope a, a coach would be able to as well and then adapt to it. That's just how a game goes. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he hacked their, their playbook or had access to the lead players at any given time. Wink, wink. It's in the book that everybody can buy. This is this is what bothers me. Which, which is why it's probably good that everyone was so bored with the history of that no one was in the shop. It makes sense. And Brayburn is off to the side like, oh, come on, y'all. We took out a loan for this. <laughs> Oh boy, so lady who Quibble just turns to clear skies and says that if you, uh, me and Windy had a connection there, it's really awesome. But if you don't want to be with me, I understand and stuff. And uh, Clear Sky just says, What are you talking about? Quibble Pants just says, You know, you said we, we should think about this. Like, you said that. And Clear Sky just says, Yeah, about your friends helping to boost up or trying to get. Um, closer to Windy here. I mean, all your friends and stuff. Like, <laughs> that's a terrible plan. You have dumb friends. <laughs> but caring. Caring dumb friends. I can see Rainbow Dash react to that. Uh, yeah, well, well, you've got a dead husband. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Well, anywho, with that, um, the couple and the child get closer and it seems this is going to be a happy ending and episode ends. So, anywho, uh, on to final thoughts. Silver, what do you think about this episode, man? Well, I think it's a lot of fun. It actually gets a lot of things right about uh, a parent, a step parent, and uh, the stepchild getting to know one another and forming a new bond. So, I think the writers did really well. I understand that, you know, a child actor, they don't nail the emotions with the same range as, a, as an adult. But I think uh, Pat Oswald's daughter did a very fine job with this character and enjoyed it even if maybe her own enjoyment uh tapered off she got a taste of what uh, her father does for a living though or at least in parts i mean he's a comedian he does i'm sure he's done a lot of voice acting oh yeah things. um he played the oh, i'm trying to remember what marvel villain he played um hmm wow who pat Oswald? yeah uh, I I did. I know that he voiced the uh, Remy in Ratatouille. True, true. And I heard that he's going to play Murdoch in a future Marvel thing. But what was the recent one? I forgot. 
but he does a lot. And he recently played Dr. Dementor in Kim Possible live action film. <sighs> we we won't hold that against money. Him. He needs to pay Indeed. the bill. He needs to pay the bill. I've got a I've got a new wife and daughter to take care of. We've got to be on the ponies. <laughs> Don't you understand? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, anyway, Silver, carrying on. Oh, you want me to carry on about how uh, Clear Sky, uh, her husband died? Okay. Well, basically, after the Trihorn no, Banya not that. I mean, do you, do you oh, have anything God. more to add? <laughs> Yes, I have more to add about this gruesome. <laughs> no, <death>. not that. <laughs> oh gosh, because you, you really don't want, need to you choose your words more carefully, Norma. Uh, yes, because I got to be honest. Uh, you know, I could go on about what happened to the uh, remains. No, 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 no. Bio- anywho, anywho, biological. Pro- <laughs> anywho, so I'm starting to think that maybe you're the cause of this, Silver. <laughs> That's right. In my spare time, I'm a trihorn. Bunny. You know what? I can't wait for the review that Silver will be doing. It'll be interesting to see. <laughs> But anywho, um, uh, is that all silver? For now. <laughs> all righty then. So anywho, um, Sappy, what do you think? Oh boy. Honestly, I didn't really get into this episode when I first viewed it until after the hidden story more came into light. And that's when it's like, oh, this is why it's hitting the feels hard. Okay. I didn't really see it as a fun episode, but I thought it was an okay episode. But that's just me. All right, all right, no problem, no problem. And Tara, uh, what about you? Well, like I said, I really like this episode from the beginning to end. It was kind of predictable at times because, you know, you've seen this so many times when a stepfather is, or is trying to get to know his daughter more. And ch- pretty much you see this in movies and TV shows a lot. But when you look at the research behind it, then that's when you know it's like, wow, okay, that's really deep and now you get to understand a bit more about how it works and what they went through. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. And it's a lot of fun. This episode is a lot of fun. <clears throat> Any, anything else to add, Tara? No, nope. unless Silver wants to add more about his... Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, I, would you like to know what the bunyip said after it was done eating him? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was no, magically no. delicious? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, boys. Anywho... As for me, I really like this episode. This episode was a lot of fun to watch, especially with, like Silva mentioned, the family stuff with how Squibble Pants was trying to get closer to Windy and get her to like him and stuff. I mean, it really hits the feels. Like, I, I really like this episode. And just looking at the backstory for this one, it's a lot of fun. This, this episode was... Like I mentioned before, a lot of fun. I really like it. It's one of those fun things. And talking about that Marvel thing, I'm just seeing here that he did Uncle Ben in Marvel Spider-Man. Uncle Ben! <laughs> yeah. His trihorn bunyip was a guy with a gun! <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I like this episode. Go watch it if you... Yeah, go, go watch it. I highly recommend but anywho, ah, oh boy, Silva, what are we going to do next week? Well, I think it's time to uh, check back with the IDW comics. We haven't touched on them in a little while. And, uh-huh. oh, what a what a duo to show. We are going to have the return of Tempest Shadow. Ooh, me likey. This is going to be a good one. Tempest Shadow is cool. Oh, she's so edgy. Oh, My kind of pony. Makes Reaper look like a blunt object. <laughs> <laughs> But anywho, so anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsugmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, they can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill, on DeviantArt under the same, where I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics, and my own variety of insanity, whenever I can. Uh, I post... Comic reviews and editorials on Wednesdays at Equestria Daily. And if you do a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. Where you can find my headcanons about gruesome deaths of ponies that no one should be thinking of, yet here I am. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Oh, um, anything else? Well, on the third day, the remains fl- r- washed <laughs> no, ashore. What uh, I mean is, oh did, you, did, did you mention about EQDs? Yes, oh, yes I did. All right. Oh, goodness me. So yeah, go check him out, guys. 
be forewarned, he can be very, very polar. So, hey, anyway. polar. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Yeah, he can be nice and mean at the same time. Oh, boy. So, hey, anyway. <laughs> Seppi. Norman, hmm. you missed your call as a diplomat. <laughs> Oh man, no! I I was too nice to be a diplomat. I I couldn't like like cheat and steal my way in. <laughs> uh, boy. Anyway, Seppi. Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, even donate a coffee to me. All you gotta do is search up Anime Christie, no space, and yeah, not not much else to say other than that. I post art. I I post a lot of cute art. That's pretty much all I can really say. I'm sorry. All right. No, all right, dude. All right, dude. Uh, What about you, Taro? Well, the good people can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324, or they could just simply do a Google search, and I'm pretty sure everything will be there, including my Patreon page. Awesomeness. All right. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrintLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash yes show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vakril. I am Asafi. And I am Tortero1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. The father's name, Dead Meat. <laughs> How do I even follow up with that? I got nothing. Uh, not sure if I will. Yeah, not, not sure what to say. Yeah. You can't really say anything after that. <laughs> Damn it, Silver, you ruin everything. I've broken you all. <laughs> Help! <laughs>